I darted it into shot then, didn't I? Well, as dart as I can dart. This, of course, is Clipson on Quarter. It's March the 23rd today, and it's another lovely evening. In fact, it's a warmer evening than last night. Temperature will still drop as soon as that sun that's over there drops below the horizon. But March the 23rd normally marks the start of our survey and for glowworm larva on the path here. Four sections, sections A, B, C and D, ending right at the very top, which is about a mile as the glowworm crawls. Or I weaselly wander. So, March the 23rd, and from now on it'll be consecutive nights on at least whenever the weather's suitable. At the moment, that looks to be for a while longer. No foreseeable forecast to rain, not that I'm aware of. It's time to make a start. Now you won't recognise this section. This is our old section S of the Glowworm Survey area. I've walked up through A, B, C and D, no sign of any lava on the way up. So, as is tradition, once we get up to the top, spend 10-15 minutes waltzing around, killing time just to give lava, or potentially any lava, a chance to waltz back onto the path. I thought I'd show you and talk about this section. A number of years ago, this was pine, at least there was a, well it was all pine at one time, then they took some out and left some, and then they were all eventually took out. Boy, what a mess. I'll put some photos in as I'm waffling along, but this was the scene of complete and utter destruction. It went from being a beautiful path Hopefully I've got the right photo in. It shows you just how nice this was. It was quite grassy, the path. Looking down, it was a lovely section. It was a section that we'd covered a couple of times. We probably walked it once, maybe twice a year, to check along here and then down subsequently what was section E. And we never found glowworms along here for a number of years. And I think it was 2012, that sort of springs to my mind, when we came down here, not down here, oh, I did find one down here, turned down section E and found a bucket full, literally almost. But one of the reasons why glowworms struggle so much at many sites, or at least many forestry sites, is it's not so much the act of the forestry themselves. The biggest problem that glowworms face is the harvesting of the trees. It's all done now completely by mechanisation. Huge big tractors and machinery that just, it's unbelievable to watch to be honest. It, they grab hold of a tree, a sort of 50-60 foot pine, grab hold of the tree by the trunk, chop it off, and as the trunk's coming down all the branches are just whipped straight off. Even the bark taken off. It's an amazingly destructive process. When this was being cleared we had a bit of rain but bear in mind Sherwood's on a really sandy soil so you need an awful amount of rain to get any sort of muddiness at Sherwood. It never really does go muddy but it did this year and if I put the photos in now this path was unrecognisable. Well recognisable as being a scene from the Somme in the First World War. We, as glowworm lovers, we were devastated by this. We knew the impact that the works would have on glowworms. And it's one of the reasons that glowworm colonies become fragmented over time when they're in forested areas such as this. Thankfully, the work shouldn't have to be done again. At least, there'll be no more pine removal. 
ordering thinning work may pose a potential problem. But the pictures that you're seeing illustrate the savagery almost of the operations and how it left. Ultimately, this path was relayed with stone, went all the way along to the top of section E. I must admit, when we found the first glowworm, because we continued when the adult season came into being and started, we started coming along here and going down section E. And when we found the first glowworm in section E, amongst all this destruction, it was quite an elation, to be honest. We subsequently found a few more, but glowworms have struggled, although they have shown some signs of an increase in the few times that I've walked along here and down E. Notice there's a group of red wings just in the tallest tree in the hollies and the pines there, just flowing down into there. They might go in a bit. They're getting sort of flighty enough. Usually, they'll come up and go around and head off northeast. Sometimes they'll go back northwest. Anyway, if you've been good and I'm in a decent mood, I might even have put in a nice clip of the sunset through the trees, through the Napoleonics at the top of Sherwood. Now it's time to start and walk down, see whether the second time around we can find a glowworm larva. This week, last year, was the best week. I even prepared some notes. <laughs> Eyes down. There was 28 last year and then sort of single figure counts the rest of the four or five weeks that was able to give some coverage but after the first week the weather was poor and I found very few larva on the path. So last year's sort of larval size data doesn't really amount to much but some more research that I've done showed that in 2009, the typical or well, average glowworm length, larval length, was 22.21 millimetres. And that was taken from a total count of 89. In 2012, it was down almost 2 millimetres, down to 20.45 out of 66 total larva. 2014, it was down again to 19.53 millimetres out of a whopping total of 169. And then in 2016, which was the last of the really good data that we had, we found a total average larval size of 17.99 millimetres. And that again was from a decent total of 83 larva. Those counts of larva in 09, 12, 14 and 16 seem like distant things of the past based on the surveys that I've done so far this year. However, we shall find out. But the evidence presently suggests that glowworms have declined here drastically. But we need to monitor it. Well, I'm halfway down, just at the bottom of C now, bottom of C and B. Just cut across the grass strip. The sky was nice. 
there's a lot of moisture in that sky. I suspect it's going to be foggy in a few hours' time. Or in the pre-dawn hours like it was this morning. It's nice to hear a bit of song. That one's Blackbird, in case you were wondering. And the Red Wing that I mentioned, they did promptly fly off northwest. So, I'll just go and carry on the survey through B and Section A. And then get back home for a cup of coffee.